Let me take my 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 cough shop out for this. Yeah, and let me open my water bottle because I feel like I end up, every time I open it, I could hear it in the background. Welcome to Lunch with Biggie, a podcast about small business and creatives sharing their stories, inspiring you. My voice might sound different than in the past episodes, and that's because I'm not Biggie. My name is Will Churn. Even though I will be your host today, we're still having lunch with Biggie. My guest today is the owner of Deli Fresh Threads, normal host of this show, and a good pal of mine. On today's episode, we are celebrating 10 years of Deli Fresh Threads. You may be asking why I'm hosting this 10-year celebration. So before we get started, I want to share a short story about how Biggie and I met in person. The year was either 2016, 2017. I was running a clothing brand called Dead Flesh Co. and had become friends with Biggie over Twitter. I think we jumped on a couple Google Hangouts before I told him about Creative South, a design conference I was going to. Somehow this led to me hopping on a plane, showing him up at his door in Orlando, and I could only assume scaring his wife and child. Then I stole him for three days where we bunked in the same room and we've been good friends ever since. Biggie, I'm so happy I can be here celebrating 10 years of a wonderful clothing brand and chatting about what it took to get to this point and maybe where you hope to be in the future. How you doing? What's going on, man? That is uh, that is by far one of my favorite all-time stories about meeting someone in real life and the power of social media. Um, you, I think you and I are like the, I use you as the, like the example of good uh, experiences. <laughs> it's also the example that I tell people jokingly where I used to like send, uh, I remember leaving on that trip and telling my coworkers, uh, and I think I told you this, I told my coworkers, I was like, hey, look, you see this picture? I was like, and you see the picture of me uh, on social media? I was like, if I die, that's who killed me. <laughs> I was like, just so you know, I was like, because everyone thought I was just absolutely nuts. But uh, no, man, you <laughs> you had a brand about, and back then, so 2016, 17, I mean, we're talking early. This is like the first five, six years of Deli yeah. Price Threads, seriously. Yeah. Um, I started my clothing brand in 2010, so just like a few years before you. And I was putting skulls on everything at this point. And all of the shirts had to do with like, either, like I mean, it was, it was all Christian stuff, but it was like all death related. It was like the hardcore kids. And I can't imagine, like, I don't know what your wife is expecting or your your daughter who must have been like six at the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe a little bit older, but... Um, I'm stoked that we did it. I don't know. I've usually, I've, I don't think I've ever met maybe a couple people like that I met on Twitter and then met in person one on one. Usually it's like at conferences, like you're in a mm -hmm. big group thing, but I'm glad we did it. I'm glad that we got along because three days together is a risky thing for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we've done it more than once. That's the thing. We've done it more than once. And uh, yeah, dude, you're part of my family, dude. You're like, my family is, uh, they, you have like an open invitation always. That's like the beauty of it. My, uh, you know, heck, even before we started the podcast, my daughter spent about 15 minutes talking with you. So uh, no, I'm forever, uh, you're forever in my life, man. I love you. I, it's, uh, and you play a big factor into some of my, uh, in some of this journey uh, of me being able to do it for as long as I have. Here at uh, Lunch with Biggie, we like to ask a question every week or every every lunch we take, and that is, uh, what's your favorite slice of pizza? Because it's my, oh, my show today. My favorite slice of pizza. My show today, mm -hmm. and I'm going to bring the jersey my, back. <laughs> my favorite slice of pizza. You betrayed me with your pork what? roll shirt, uh, so we're going to make up for it today. We're going to talk about, well, I mean, that is one of the reasons why I brought up the idea of when you collaborate, you do have to change some things up. Now, I did hear something. Um, and we'll have to discuss, but supposedly the word Taylor ham is not trademarked, but I thought it was, um, no, I don't care and, either way. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, uh, yeah, you don't care. Um, <laughs> anyhow, the slice of pizza, slice yeah. of pizza. I, so my rule of thumb is for, for pizza when it comes to it, like I, automatically I need to have like, try a regular cheese slice just because if you can't met, do a good cheese slice, then I don't want, I don't want to have any of your pizza. Um, it's kind of like usually when I go to an Italian restaurant, it's like cheese slice and chicken parm sub. Uh, if you can't do, if you mess both those up, then forget you. Um, if not, I do, I do like the works or I like the, whatever the specialty is, um, that the pizza place does, but I figure you can't really go wrong with like a good cheese or pepperoni, the, just the basics. I feel like if you can't do that right, the bread, the cheese, the sauce, um, then I don't, I don't want to eat it. And, and it's funny because I just, you know, I do, I do agree that good pizza is pizza. Like it's always good, but there's some pizza that is just like so much better than others. Oh yeah. And that good pizza is only found in New Jersey. 
New York City does even hold a flame to that Jersey Jersey slice. I love, uh, I love, I love that because <laughs> I, I, and and the hard part for me is I can't even agree or disagree with you because I haven't been to Jersey in so many decades that oh. it's like I don't know any, I don't know any different. But I'm pretty sure that I may cry when I do eat when I do have a bagel, a Jersey bagel, a Jersey, you know, anything like that. From that brings me back to my childhood. I'll probably start. Crying do an emotional cry of of joy when it comes to it that's why i love seeing i ask for your pizza pictures uh oh, dude, when i posted so Jersey. many i just came back from christmas <laughs> visiting family i was there for like three weeks i think and i ate uh, over four pizzas <laughs> i believe it, it but you said you went enough. to the same place i was expecting you to eat pizza every single day uh most days yeah and i would just <laughs> on my way out of town i'd stop at my local pizza place mama c's my favorite pizza and uh but the, the first slice I had going back to Jersey wasn't a fancy slice. It, yeah, it was cheese because you're cheese. right. That's the yeah. go to. If you don't like cheese and you really don't like pizza. Yeah, but I'm sure pizza. your listeners are more interested in what your favorite sandwich is. And I think you've you've left hints at it over episodes. Uh, but what's your favorite sandwich? Uh, um, I will. So the answer, the generic answer that I give usually is um, whatever I'm in the mood for, which is true. Depends on where I go is I get, um, I don't. And, and obviously if you go somewhere and, you know, so I, I won't get a cheesesteak at a place that's not known for cheesesteak. Sure. Um, I'm just not down for that. I, I, I will probably say that the sandwich that I created that has my name to it is probably my, one of my favorites, um, which is the, the Biggie Bon Me. Uh, and that's like an orange chicken sandwich, um, that, uh, that I came up with that I've done as well. Then it has like pickled veggies. This one has pickled col- uh, cucumbers and carrots and coleslaw. And then it has like a sweet chili mayo on it. Um, and then it's like a brioche bun. Cause I wanted it more. I could either do it as a bun or a, or a hoagie, like a bun, bon me French bread, but, um, either one, like that's kind of one of my favorites because it has a little bit of that sweet a little bit of the sour um of the pickled veggies um that's probably one of my favorites um at home it's probably you know you really can't go wrong with either like a grilled cheese or mm. just like a good tall like i like a club type where you're like stacking up all the meats i like i like having you got to have some meat layers there um is definitely the the key to it I, i'm not there's a reason why I make sandwiches at home. I make my own sandwiches and no one else makes them for me at home. And I'm I not... don't think you mentioned where can you get that Biggie Bon Me? Oh, the Biggie Bon Me. The Biggie Bon Me um, is available at Gnarly Barley. And it's also um, where you can actually grab my latest uh, my latest and one of my first restaurant collab shirts, um, the Orlando Sammy, which is, uh, you know, which is pretty exciting to see not only having that and i'm also celebrating my uh my anniversary my i'm going to be celebrating my anniversary with them as well um just because they have a, a large facility and they're just great guys um and i really appreciate their support with me through the year uh and through the years um seeing growth they actually just turned 11 so i'm turning 10 so we've been wow. together around the same time frame so it's been pretty fun to see us both grow along uh side by side so if people are listening to this now they should go to gnarly barley Pick up your shirt, pick up your sandwich, and support a nice local business in Orlando. Heck yeah, man. For it, sure. Definitely is that do. celebration open to the public? Yeah, celebration is open. It is, if you hear it, I mean, obviously, I try to do make my podcast evergreen, but if you're hearing this February 4th, 2023, 12 to 3, I will be having a party and um, I will be celebrating my 10 years, wear your Deli Fresh Threads. Or, come shirtless and buy an Orlando Sammy shirt and then just put that on. Correct. That would be the other way to go. (laughs) Or you can just buy an Orlando Sammy shirt on my website as well. Uh, Whatever works for you. Either way, I want to see a a build. I want to see an entire restaurant filled with people wearing my, uh, with my stuff. I definitely, uh, I definitely would be something that I appreciate. I love, uh, I love seeing people wear Deli Fresh Threads. All right. Let's get into the important questions. Yeah. I think, uh, one of the things we did on that first trip, I think, was like your first serious video content where we did a video about you making ice cream sandwiches. I yeah. believe that was the first trip. And then I know we went to uh, Badass Sandwiches that same trip. And I don't know if we made any videos for that. But yeah, like that was like the big first step of like, you can't just make shirts and expect your brand to grow. 
which is funny because I killed my brand and you're still going. So, <laughs> well, but you know what? It, and I think you, you're a great example to me because of the fact of when we've talked about this, like, and I've brought it many times on the podcast is that when we're, when we're so close to something, we don't see it. And sometimes when someone outside sees it and it's so obvious, like you are, and that's one of the reasons why I appreciate having, you know, having someone like you to be able to kind of go the route of like, Hey, have you thought of this? And I'll be like, no, I never even thought of doing something like that. Um, and so then I think that's kind of the importance of having, Having people, you know, it's great to have people that support you and say, yeah, you're doing great and this is awesome. But it's also great to have friends that go, hey, you should really do this. Um, and you kind of see it because you've seen it from the other side, but you've also seen it because you're not right in front of it. Uh, and so you actually kind of can see and view some of those things. And I think to me, that's been very helpful because you've made me feel uncomfortable on some things of like things that I'd, I'm like, eh, I don't know if I should do this. And it's like, but because of the fact that it makes sense and it and I trust you and it's kind of one of those where you're like you come from a good spot and it to have people like that is so important because I I've been able to kind of go yes I should create more content and I and I do need to grow this and some of them are very obvious things that I just never thought of doing um and that's something that's one of the great things about having people like that that kind of are looking out for you but at the same time are not so close or or so involved in your brand that they're able to kind of give you some of that insight yeah, so let's go back all the way to the beginning, uh, even before 2013. Was Dellyfresh Threads your first like experimentation with clothing and designing T-shirts? So no. Um, so when I was in college, I studied. Uh, I studied at UCF, and when uh, and my big thing was I was there in late 90s. So like 98. Like I was. I went from 94 to 98, and when I was there. I um no one had clothing for the university. It was like not what it was now. Like now it's like the second largest university in the country. It's um people know us and either hate our team or whatever, but um it wasn't known. And so I had an idea for a shirt. Um I went to all the places that created merchandise because it's collegiately licensed merchandise. And when I went to them, I told them I said, Hey, I have this idea. And they all basically said, yeah, I said, all I want is for you to give me five shirts. I go, if you make this, I don't care if you make money. I just want like five shirts for me and my friends to wear. And no one wanted to do it. And so I had uh, another, I had one of my old roommates who literally drew it up. And it was literally the old NWO, that old wrestling mm -hmm. um, square with like, and it just said UCF on it. And I found a printer that was local that was licensed and they made it for me and I started wearing them. And then basically he's like, you should do this. And I said, you know what? I should. And I literally found two other guys and we did uh, a brand called nightmare apparel. And we did it for college for five years. It was all licensed stuff. We came up with ideas and that's kind of where I got the first taste of it. And I loved it, but I also learned lessons from it because when you deal with a college team, if your team doesn't win and you have a kind of like at the time an apathetic, um, you know, kind of like fan base, if your team doesn't win, no one buys. Mm -hmm. So I was, I learned very valuable lessons there. I also learned lessons because I was working with other people. Um, and when you work with other people, sometimes it's a little bit hard of like the balance of who's doing the work and not doing the work. But that's kind of where I got my first taste of it. Um, so it was like 98 and I did it for five years. So something like two that, you know, so I went a, a long time, like 2003, 2004 is when I stopped with it and I decided to shut down the brand. Um, and then I just kind of lived, I guess, quote unquote, regular life yeah. of, you know, well, you the got day -day. married, had yeah. a kid, yep. you, the day to day. I think everyone already still knows, like you work a full-time job outside of daily first threads. So that had all had to start. Um, so now you were just sitting around doing nothing. <laughs> correct, correct. But at the same time, that was the thing where, as I was doing that, that the, like the adulting life, um, that's kind of what led me back though, because I, I still always had a love for it. I love seeing people wear my designs. I loved all that aspect of it. And so for me, um, I literally had one day one of those conversations with my wife Kristen, and I said to her, I said, "Hey, um, I love my, I love our life. I'm like, I love everything. I'm like, I'm, I'm very happy." I go, but. There is a side of me that's dying every day. It's the creative side. And I need to do something about it because every day, every day that I don't do something, I feel like it's making me worse. And, um, and so she then asked to pose the question, what would you do if you won the lottery? And I said something, you know, I said, I'd do something sandwich related. And then she said, well, you can do whatever you want. Just don't make us go bankrupt mm. um, is what she said. And so then I thought long and hard and obviously restaurant business is very, uh, 
it's a difficult task. And I just didn't really, and I'm not a chef. I'm just an eater. Uh, I mean, I like making sandwiches, but I'm not, I'm not a chef. And so then I kind of said, I went back to it. She's like, what, what would make you happy? And I said, I loved making clothes. And so that was kind of where um, some of that kind of went. And I don't know if you want me to go further. I mean, I kind of, some of the aspects that, that kind of went like during that time when I was thinking of those things, I had people that would, um, I had one particular guy who basically his name was Ben and he's like, Hey dude, he's like, have you read this book crush it from Gary Vaynerchuk? And I was like, no. And he's like, you should totally read it. And I'm not a reader. Um, and I, I plowed through that book and I absolutely loved it because it literally was talking about like me doing something with your passion. Um, so a mix between that and then the years during the years, I became a, a fan of Johnny cupcakes and I've heard him speak. Um, and I got to meet Johnny and talk to his family and like all that. I think a mixture of the two of them, plus my love of sandwiches. I was like, I think I need to do a clothing brand that's sandwich themed, but I also need to show my love and, and show that I'm obsessed with sandwiches and, and show and show that. And so that's kind of how I started, um, before I even started the clothing brand. Like, even though my official date is like, I consider it January 18th of 2013. Um, it's actually pretty much like 2012. I started doing like just constantly posting things about sandwiches and doing my research and really taking, figuring out how exactly I was going to lay this whole thing out, how I was going to be packaged, how I was going to do everything. Yeah. I mean, that makes total sense. Um, there's a lot that goes into a clothing brand that I think you just like listed, right? I think a lot of people think it's like, oh, let me make some cool t-shirts. But even going back to your UF UCF days, you realize like people aren't buying t-shirts. They're buying something that supports a brand. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like one of the big lessons you probably learned for Daily Fresh Threads is they're not buying t-shirts about sandwiches. They are buying something to show their love of sandwiches. Like t-shirts are always a supporting object and they're not the object. Um, and yeah, going even as far as influencing your packaging, influencing what you call uh, sides, right? Like your, yeah. your buttons and your stickers mm -hmm. and all that, um, really creating a, a system of, or maybe I would even say more than a system, a love letter to sandwiches that other people can kind of uh, adopt as their own. Yeah. And, and I think to me, that was the big one because obviously my, I studied marketing. So like I wanted to use it and that was the big thing. I was like, what is it? Can, I want to be consistent because the one thing that I did notice, um, because before I even opened, started the brand, I started reaching out to other clothing brands and I was like learning up, trying to learn from them and follow them. And that was one of the reasons why you and I like, even just you and I got in touch because I kind of love the, I love seeing what other brands are doing. And it's amazing through the years how you see those brands would not survive. And a lot of it is because of the fact that it's not a cohesive message. Um, it's all over the place. And for me, I knew that if I had, I know it's niche and I know it's very specific, um, but I knew that that was where I needed to be and how I needed to stay consistently with that. You can open it up a little bit, the aperture, but it's got to stay within the world of sandwiches. Um, you know, and that was like, that's always been key to me and very always been my focus showing love to the king of meals. All right. So in the beginning there, like when you were trying to figure out all your packaging and everything, how did you find those first designers to like design your logo, get your website up? Um, this being all new to you, that must've been something that was a little daunting. Yeah. So for me, it's interesting because I, like I said, I was doing a lot of uh, backtracking. So I did a lot of like research and everything. And so during that time, I was doing a lot of following on Instagram. And I was like a lot of Instagram followers looking for different artists. I've always been intrigued by designers and what they do. And so that's kind of how I went the route of looking for different designers. And now in my day job, so in my day job, I, my corporate job, I do, um, I guess I use marketing, but I also try to help find people. So I kind of, my big thing for me was there, each artist has a certain skill or a certain area that they kind of either flourish in or they enjoy, or it's kind of like, I would say like their medium or how our style of design. And so I kind of started looking for, you know, just what, 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 what did I like or who was I liking the most of and, and interacting with. And I was always interacting with a lot of the designers. That's one thing that I've always been a, I'm always kind of always end up becoming first a fan of them and just kind of interacting and, and just kind of providing, you know, whatever feedback or information, just kind of becoming, you know, creating that relationship with them. Um, and then I ended up finding out 
or finding someone on, a, and I believe it was on through Instagram. I ended up finding someone by the name of Lane Lee um, was his name. And Lane lived in California. And I think what it was is that I draw, I was drawn to him. He started drawing. It was like all these different type of like spoofs for um, just a variety of different things, everything from like GI Joe, he man. And I just really liked some of his styles. And, and, and obviously I wasn't the only one because I, I know about three or four different clothing brands that were using him or talking with him. And I kind of, I kind of, my big thing for me has always been when I work with a designer is telling them, telling them my situation, like my story, what I'm looking for, what my brand's about and seeing if it gels. Um, I know it's kind of weird because I, I, at the end of the day, some designer may just tell me, yeah, I love sandwiches and they may actually hate sandwiches. But my big thing's always been, I would love to work with someone that actually wants to work with me, wants to represent my brand or wear my brand because, um, you know, I don't know where it's going, but I also think it's something, one of those things where, I don't know, I just feel like if they appreciate it and they love it, then, and we build that friendship and that relationship, then it's one of those things where like, they're proud to say that they work, they've done work for Deli Fresh Threads. And I think that's kind of what I've always wanted just because I really... I really respect and um, just amazed by what art, you know, what the creativity, because that's the one thing that I don't do is I can doodle it. I can come up with it. I can draw it, but it never, it's never as nice or as amazing as what these artists do. So I absolutely loved Lane's style. And so I reached out to him and kind of told him, this is kind of what I'm thinking of. This is what I want. Um, the number one thing is that I kept doodling a piece of bread um, every single time it was every single time I was doodling this bread guy. And I even have like a doodle of the bread where it was like me with like a goatee or whatever. It was like, almost, or a beard on the bread. And I said, I'm like, I want something, my mascot to be like a bread slice. And I even drew him. And so it was one of those things where I had, you know, and as we were conversing together, he knew that I was from Orlando. He knew I liked Mickey mouse because I actually bought a Mickey mouse print from him. Uh, or it was an Oswald print from him. And so then he was like, oh, well, what if we kind of went the route of the cartoony hands or the cartoony, the old vintage style Mickey eyes, like mascot wise, and then using a bread slice to be your mascot because the mascot was going to be me. Yeah. And so it just kind of evolved from there. Um, and then he did that and he did a few designs for me um, that I had like in grilled cheese, I trust, which I just recently brought back. And a lot of that is just because those are things that I would see and I would doodle and be like, this is what I want. Uh, and then he would be like, oh yeah. And his style was very, very in, in line with mine, um, with what I liked. He actually doesn't do as much designing as he used to. He actually now does um, something totally different. He's a, he's a coach, like a tumbling, uh, coach for, uh, for like for competitive cheerleading. That's so um, funny. And I was that's looking, something that he used to do. I was looking for him online because I've got some of your stuff on my personal portfolio for the work I've done from you. Yeah. And I like to let people know, like, hey, anytime you see a logo or any work that's not mine, I always am like very clear, like this is. Yeah. So I was trying to add him and link to his website, right? I don't only want to play his name and I want to be like, go hire yeah. him if you like this. Yeah. Uh, and I couldn't find him online anywhere. I was just like, I've never seen someone just like disappear. He straight up disappeared. He does. The weird part is he does do some graphic work, but he does it for like cheerleading shirts and stuff like that. I have occasionally like he and I will touch base because our birthdays are ironically like a, a day or two apart from each other. Sure. So like I'll text him or we'll FaceTime or we'll do something like on our birthdays. Um, and I always kind of throw it out there. I'm like, hey, if you ever have if you ever feel like the motivated or want the need to do something sandwich related, love to work with you. Um, but yeah, he was on a streak where he was doing there must have been like four or five clothing brands that I knew that he was working with and they all somehow knew each other. And I became friends with a lot of them. And obviously none of them, I think maybe one of them now is still a brand. I don't think I'll, there's not a lot. I mean, I have a table, um, my old kitchen table is what I use all my, I fold all my shirts on and I, and I love collecting stickers, but for a long time I had a bunch of clothing brands on it and I don't, there's not many left on there that I actually can say, oh yeah, that's, they're still open or, or they're still doing stuff. A couple of years ago, I was uh, cleaning my following list on Twitter and there were so many, like both uh, music brand bands, like yeah. and clothing brands. I was just like, doesn't exist anymore. Doesn't exist anymore. Doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> just like deleting them and then leaving a few in there for like nostalgia reasons. Like for I can't nostalgia. unfollow them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get it, man. I get it. Yeah, it's a, it's amazing to see, uh, you know, and and it's and it's a tough. It's definitely been a tough road, and it's um, 
you know, and I, and I can definitely say that you don't, you don't create. And I think you, any person who owns a clothing brand or has clothes done a clothing brand, they will all say the same thing. You do, you don't start a clothing brand to be famous or, or to get rich. <laughs> yeah. Or rich. Well, definitely that's, not. That's an important thing when you're talking about like 10 years after your UCF clothing brand, why did you need to make something? And none of that, what you say was like, I needed more money. And online, you always see people like start your side hustle to make more money, start drop shifting to make more money. And a clothing brand isn't to get it. Like, that's not to say people don't get rich, right? Like you mentioned Johnny Cupcakes. Uh, Josh Reza owns Chomp that just sold oh, their yeah. like millionth shirt. Yeah, right? Chomp is amazing. Yep. And there are success stories, but like if you ask both of them if they got into it for money, like none of them would say yes. Like there's just, there's better ways to make money. <laughs> for sure. Um, so with that, like with money, maybe not being the biggest priority with any kind of side project like this, what yeah. do you think a few of your biggest wins over the last 10 years are? Oh, wow. Um, I think I will, de I will safely say that I think for me being the fact that I guess I'm starting I, I, through this process and, and cause I, I mean, let's, let's face it. I, I'm a, I'm an online clothing brand. Um, I try to own my knee. I try to own my, my yard. So I try to own my area. I think Orlando has kind of known me or I've become the sandwich guy. Like it's either, if you live in Orlando, you know me as either UCF biggie or, you know, him, or, you know, me as the sandwich guy. Um, so I think in the last 10 years, the things that I've kind of gotten from that is that it, the notoriety has slowly gone more national where I've gotten select. I, I, I can safely say, and it's not and as I, I guess it's, it's very humbling to think about, but I have a lot of celebrities that are in the food industry that do know who I am, do wear my product, uh, do wear Deli Fresh Threads, know who I am. Um, and I think to me, those are some of like the special moments to kind of see that know like, hey, like someone else is actually recognizes me or does know who I am. Um, I think to me, that's something that's awesome. Um, another big one for me is because of the brand, I've created this amazing relationship with so many different small businesses and sandwich shops um, and just introduce so many people. And I'm, and it's kind of one of those where I'm like, I do practice what I preach. I believe in, you know, just like the shirt you designed, uh, we designed together, support your local sandwich shop. Like I love supporting local sandwich shops. I love the relationships and the friendships that I've gotten from those um, all those years. And it's not just in Orlando. It's like the, in South Carolina, in Chicago. I mean, it's like, all these places nationwide that know who I, who I even am because of my brand. Um, I think to me is very, has become very important to me. Um, you know, and, and I will say that, you know, through the last, in the last two, three years, it's definitely, um, amped up where I'm now like starting to do things on television and do things, you know, like, and then now even having an, my own sandwich at a restaurant, um, and starting to come up and like having concepts that have become my ideas and my concepts that are become menu items, or at least secret menu items or specials. And then even some that are actual, you know, menu items that you can order at any day. Um, to me, I think it's kind of, it's, it's kind of an amazing thing for being just a sandwich brand. Um, you know, and I, and I definitely see that as something continuing to grow. I mean, it's just one of those things where to me, I think that's kind of been the, the fun, the fun part. I mean, I sometimes, I kind of, I kind of have to remind myself that like, oh yeah, so-and-so's worn my stuff or he knows who I am or, Hey, Jim Gaffigan calls me the deli guy or the sandwich guy, you know, and like, and, and things like that. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of amazing to be able to experience some of those things and, and to kind of, and, you know, and just be able to grow and build this thing. Yeah. I, I think that's totally true. And it must've been two or three years ago. It has to have been around that. I remember talking to you about like 10 years is coming up and then really pushing you to be like, you either need to take this more seriously or you're going to drop it. Um, and that's what happened to my clothing brand, right? I think I made it nine years and I was just like, it wasn't growing. I was enjoying it less. So I just like stopped, right? I had other things I could do. Yeah. And I remember talking to you about that and being like, hey, like you need to make moves now or it's not going to be up to you. You're just going to stop because you're going to, it's not going to be worth your time anymore. Yeah. So in the last few years, you've started a podcast, you've done uh, wholesale accounts now. So people around the country are selling your stuff. 
you've done bigger events for sure. You, you survived COVID and kept selling stuff online. Yep. You have a new online shop that's bigger and better for future growth using, I think, Shopify now, which yes. for many people, that doesn't mean anything, but like that was a big move from big cartel. Like you have so many more tools now that will allow you to kind of grow faster in the future. And maybe growth isn't the priority, but like you have to have some metric you're going against to be like, am I on the right track? Yeah. How has uh, all that change been for you over the last few years? Because I know that's also meant that you've had to give up some things that you loved, right? You and I talk about that a lot of like, uh, are you going to make the business decision? Or are you going to make the love decision? And yeah, both are have their place, right? Yeah. And it's and it's kind of funny because you when that happens, you start noticing like there's certain give and takes. There's give and takes that I wasn't um, and I'll, I'll perfect example like I. I will, I can safely say, and and you and I have had numerous conversations about this, Will, like where my, I probably, my, my passion and making the brand being such like, I guess my baby type of thing where, because I grew it and I, and I came up with it. Um, I've hindered it to a certain point. So Mm -hmm. in the beginning, so like in the beginning, um, I didn't sell for a good three or four years because, um, I didn't, you know, when I first started, I didn't even sell at like pop-ups or do anything like that because I was like, I was stuck on the idea that I needed to, my shirts needed to be wrapped and they needed to do this. And I didn't know how to do it. And I would create all these like hurdles. And, and then of course I figured that part out to be able to do at events. But then I then started having an issue where I was like, do I want to do wholesale? And if I do wholesale, do you, if I sell my shirts, are they going to, I I want them to experience these things. And these are the moments where like you and I kind of have had that conversation where, you um and you kind of start realizing when you start noticing maybe smaller brands that have grown and like you start noticing like okay they're not doing these certain things but there's also a cost level to it and there's got to be like the balance of what you're willing to do and not willing and you know what you're not willing to get get rid of or stop doing and then what you're willing to do um and so there are certain elements where i had to make changes myself because um you know and and kind of like you said do i want to grow or not grow and in my world, I, I do want to grow. Like, I do want this thing to be, I would love to, for this brand to become big enough where it is nationwide and people are wearing it just like they do when they buy wholesale and, and all that stuff. And they're, and then now it's in more, more States. I want it to grow that way. Um, so, but it does come at a cost and those things are the, those were some of the hard ones, like stupid, something as minor as I wrap all my shirts. Um, and when you do wholesale, you can't do that. There's no mm-hmm. way you can do that, um, and be able to give that experience. But I'm also was, I guess my brain also was very locked in on like, well, that's part of the experience, but guess what? People rip that thing open after like the first two seconds. <laughs> and at the end of the day, they're wearing a shirt. Um, and so the shirt is really the main, the main gist of it. It's not the wrapping of it. The wrapping is just part of the packaging that comes with the entire experience of the brand. Um, and so those are some of the things that I had to get over myself. Um, and at least just kind of get over of how I wanted to grow and, and, you know, and think it comes to little things like that, that you kind of go and, and I'll continue to have those moments where I'm going to have to make those decisions. If I want to get, you know, you have to get cheaper sometimes in order to get, you know, in order to be able to make a little bit more or make it easy, a little bit more palpable for a business to want to take care of your stuff and buy wholesale um, and things like that. So sometimes you have to make certain sacrifices um, on how you're going to do those things. Yeah. I think those are like the two big things that stood out for me was uh, getting you to stop wrapping all your shirts, right? Anyone who buys from your website and anyone who goes in person to one of your vending things, like yep. they all get that same experience. Um, but knowing when to kill a good idea is hard, right? Mm-hmm. If it, if wrapping was stupid or not fun or no one liked it, then it'd been very easy to cut. But being like, to get my shirts, even uh, locally, let's let's call it a couple local places, uh, yeah. the neighborhood, right? Like you, you're selling yeah. your shirts in the neighborhood in Orlando. The neighbors, yeah. Is it the neighbors? Yeah, the neighbors. Ah, it's like that, the neighborhood, but it's the neighbors. The neighbors. Yeah. Um, you have to have shirts hanging on a rack there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so we ended up, and I think that's kind of when you have someone where it's great. Like you and I sat down and I talked to you at, probably at nauseum of how I wanted to handle this. Um, and we actually created hand tags because I was like, well, this will be the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, and then also the other aspect of it is 
um, doing some pivots or at least some additional focus or maybe even expanding the brand where it's not just shirts. Um, and then you kind of create these other things like, you know, obviously stickers were always a huge thing for me, but like enamel pins, patches, um, heck I've even, because of this, because of me opening up a little bit more, I'm looking at things such as like, I have greeting cards versions, um, and things like that. Like those are all things that you, I probably would have never thought of going into or trying to expand, but it's finding ways um, of opening up. Um, and same thing, even with like the idea of like a perfect example, a very popular hat that, um, like my, my wonder fresh, uh, hat where mm -hmm. it was, uh, it doesn't, you know, obviously you know what it is when you see it, you know, it's kind of bread related. Um, and it's very popular, but like, I would have, I probably would have not done that. Cause I was like, Oh no, it's not a sandwich, but it's, it's in my world of deli and sandwich. It's in my sandwich universe. Um, and even things like that have all kind of expanded areas and it's an introduction for my brand. And mm -hmm. those are all things that I probably would have not done before. But when you start going and start selling at places like the neighbors, um, or even, you know, kind of when I get to do collabs and stuff like that, those are all things that you start kind of thinking about, like, how can I grow the brand? How can I introduce people to the brand? And maybe how do I keep it where I'm staying within my realm, but at the same time growing and kind of, um, you know, and, and when you're, especially when you're collaborating, um, kind of doing that balance act where it's like, you know, you kind of have, it's a give and go or a give and take when it comes to that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> So 10 years is a long time. It's a long time and long enough time that you could have seen trends come in and out of style. For me, when I first started my hardcore clothing brand, uh, I can't remember what they called it. It was like popcorn or something, but every uh, metal band and every like little metal clothing brand had like really vibrant cartoony designs. You see like, uh, like Nickelodeon almost esque designs, but with like this kind of like bleeding typeface, right? It was a very like <laughs> juxtaposed, funny, but that died off pretty fast, right? And then it yeah. got to like refined and where we're at now, it's like almost more minimalist. What yeah. are some trends that you might have seen come and gone or maybe trends that impacted you? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think I've had, um, I've had to think a lot about some of that because the cartoony, like my brand's very cute and cartoony. Um, but I also don't, I, but at the same time, it was like, that's kind of one of the big ones where it's like a balancing act, I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's something that you, like, it's funny cause you and I've had con many conversations about that. Cause I'm trying to teeter the line of wanting to do some cartoony things, but I also want to have some areas where it's kind of like, you know, I kind of want to have my cake and eat it too. Um, so I try to find some things that are more either minimal, minimalistic, uh, minimal, minimalistic, <laughs> uh, and simplified, but I also kind of, um, I kind of, you know, like the bright colors. I mean, obviously a lot of these things just come back. Um, a sure. lot of people love that, that old eighties vintage, um, you know, the eighties, nineties vintage stuff, uh, you know, that I, that's in there. So there's some things that come back, back and forth. There's a lot of them that are kind of like, you know, pop culture, you know, the Supreme, you know, everyone wanted to do a version of that, like the mm -hmm. parody versions of a lot of things. Um, and so that's kind of one of the, some of the trends that I've noticed or seen that everyone kind of jumps, will try to jump on. I obviously do do parody type stuff. Um, I try to keep it within my world of sandwiches. Um, and so then, I, but I also love sports. And so like, I kind of, kind of go that route. Um, that's kind of probably where I do more of my parody aspect of mm -hmm. it. Um, but it's also something that kind of is really, really relevant because that's why I created a series called Sandwich City Series, where it's like cities and their sandwiches um, and kind of correlating those things. Because to me, that's those are the things that I correlate a city to. Um, and even though I may not be in those cities, um, I want to represent those cities or I want to show love to those cities and those sandwiches. Um, and so to me, that was like a big one for me where a big trend um, that I've seen. Cause a lot of people obviously are, are very big into their local, um, local area. So I kind of wanted to kind of hit that spot, but I also wanted to hit my own local spots or at least support or kind of hash, you know, do the whole eat local and support local. That's like the, been the big, uh, the big one, um, that I've noticed the biggest <laughs> trend right now is seeing more and more of that. Yeah. Uh, there's been a lot of shirts you've made where I was like, that is not going to sell biggie. That is dumb. And then you're like, I sold a bunch of them today. I was like, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> there, there's, there's a few, there's a few that you and I have gone back and forth on where it's like, you're like, is, is that's really selling? And I'm like, yeah. And then there's yeah. others where I'm like, 
I was like, I think this is going to be a, a killer. And then it's like, nope, not, did not, not a killer, not a killer at all. But I'm usually like, even those, like the ones you're like, this is going to kill. I'm usually like, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> to call out one, because we can embarrass you a little bit, right? Yeah, go ahead. Um, was the Anna's sandwiches oh. one, which you can get online now at DelaFreshThreads.com. So I, think I love, I absolutely love that shirt. Local uh, designer Adam Grayson designed that. Yes. And you told me about it and I hate Disney. Like I really, none of the Disney shows, I don't think I've ever seen Frozen, but you showed me, it's like, that is dope. Like that looks great. And you're like, I can't move it. I was like, I don't understand. I can't, like it's I can't. one of the coolest shirts. <laughs> I literally, uh, yeah. I mean, that's like the whole thing for me was like me trying to go, I wanted to have like a Disney, a Disney sense to it. Obviously, um, the one thing that the only thing that I've ever had that goes that went has gone viral on TikTok um, is my um, I have two videos. Ironically, never went viral on YouTube, but went viral on TikTok. My two videos where I ask all the Disney princesses, mm -hmm. what's your favorite sandwich? Yeah. Um, and obviously my favorite princess, if anyone would can cannot not guess is Anna, because Anna is she has a song. We finish each other's sandwiches. And I had this idea that I wanted to make a shirt. If Anna owned a sandwich shop, it would be called Anna's and it would be an Arendelle. And uh, and it came out amazing. I did it. I even did it like a light blue shirt because that's what kind of Anna wears, um, you know, in the in the whole thing in the movies. Um, it's still one of my favorite shirts. Um, and it's funny because every single Disney person, I thought for sure, you know, my magical people um, that would go to those and love Frozen would jump on it. And yeah, I it ser seriously, it's one of those where like I can safely say like that's one of those where I'm like I totally. Either I di I didn't do something right or I didn't hit it. I didn't market it somehow. And ironically, I just posted it recently because I'm starting to post back some of my old stuff. Because one thing I've learned is that even though we get tired of it, people other people don't know about it. And I laughed because people reacted. I just posted recently on it. And when I posted it, people were reacting and saying, oh, my God, this is amazing. It's my favorite design. And I'm like, do you know that it's on my website? Like, yeah. I, I, I must have too many menu items for you to not see it. But I'm like that's on there i was like it's on there it's available so uh so yeah listening that's to definitely this, one of them yeah go buy it if you love if you love if you hey if, i mean no, if you no, love no. frozen if, if you got 20 bucks go buy it period yeah, go buy something <laughs> um cool so like what are you thinking the future holds what are the big things that you're hoping 10 years is a long time I don't know what if you're going to be another 10 years or what's that oh, like, but dude, like i have no idea i i will tell you this um I kind of I've used I've used Delhi Fresh Threads. I will say that I've used Delhi Fresh Threads as my lightning rod. And I've pretty much have let it where it it has allowed me so many opportunities to be able to do. I've talked at conferences, I've done, you know, I've done things on the radio, I've done, you know, I've done it's it's just given me so many opportunities that I kind of look at it as I'm really down for the journey of where it's going to lead me. Um could it I mean, could it go somewhere? I don't, I, I know people have asked me, they're like, Hey, would you ever consider doing like a food truck and having that go around? I'm like, I don't even think I need to do a food truck. I, I logistically tell my wife, like, yeah, it'd be great if I had tons of money and I can just, I could blow it on there. But I'm like, well, why? I'm like, I could just do a pop-up and do it that way. Um, would it be great to like have like a, a, a shop where I somehow have like a little corner of um and there's like a sandwich shop and i somehow do something with the sandwich shop and i have like a little corner to sell some of my stuff yeah it'd be great it'd be fun to do i've sold stuff in stores and it's fun but i really i kind of don't know like I, ideally i mean dream scenario would always be to obviously be able to like travel around and eat sandwiches and talk sandwiches and sell my stuff and and do those things i would uh I would love that, but I, you know, but I'd also love that because I look at it as like, I would love to be, to be something to be able to do with my family, um, or be able to try to do, but, um, I'm not sure. I mean, it's like, it's, it's so tough. Um, and I kind of look at that, like I, I kind of, and I notice it even more during my, during my podcasts, um, doing podcasts with so many different small businesses. Um, I'm just kind of, I don't know. I, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer on what your plan is for the next five years. And if you don't know um, and you're enjoying it and you're being successful and you see the the, the business growing, I think I'm just kind of still taking it for a ride and I'm seeing where it goes. Could yeah. it hopefully in five years give me, I mean, I'm further along than where I thought I think I was five. I definitely know I'm further along than I was oh, yeah. five years ago. Um, but I also know that 
it's opened a lot more doors for me. And I do think that it's going to Delhi fresh threads will, will lead me to something bigger than, than, than what it is, whether or not Delhi fresh threads stays as Delhi fresh threads, um, you know, type of thing, who yeah. knows? I, but I mean, I enjoy, I, I keep enjoying doing this. I will say that it's very, it becomes very difficult. I have like a, if you look, if you were to look in my office, it's like very somewhat well organized, but it's a lot of shirts and it, and the game of merchandise is a pain oh. in the sense of sizing and everything else People that comes with it. can look at your office. No, no, they can look at my office. Yes. But if I'm because saying, because like, I'm recording looking, this right now, correct. correct. <laughs> but if you're look, if you were to look at my entire office, like I have literally shelves and shelves of, of shirts and well, it's, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing maybe hundreds right now. <laughs> yeah. That's only one half of the room. And then the other half of the room has even more. And it's pretty insane. Um, the amount of clothing that I have, which sometimes is a very, um, you know, it kind of goes back to that topic of like how I'm a, some like great example, the on a shirt, like there may be something that you may think, um, and it's that, and that's kind of the hardest been the hardest part for me in these in these all these years is like when do you give up on a design if no one actually knows because sometimes you're kind of we're we're a, I'm a spec in the world sure. of the internet so sometimes it's kind of figuring out like when do you give up on it like maybe it isn't a bad design it just wasn't ready a perfect example my pastrami on rye pastrami on rye is like is a new york knicks design uh that i was inspired when i saw when i saw it and i said oh my god this is pastrami on rye for a good chunk of years it was i had it and no one bought it and i was like this is ridiculous then all of a sudden the guy from joe the guy who owns gold belly next thing i know you look at his profile picture what is he wearing <laughs> he's wearing that shirt um and even then it didn't even blow up and now it's like it's just something i always have because people just like hey like it's great and it's a lot of sometimes that's what happens it's like you know there's I really kind of now stuck to the idea of, and it's really honed in on me is like, not that I'm a musical act or a musician, but these bands and these people that do these things for such a long period of time before they finally explode. Uh, and then when they're like, Oh my God, they're brand new. They're like, no, they're not. They've been here mm -hmm. for like 10 years uh, or they've been playing music for 16 years and it just finally happened. Well, that's kind of how I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it as, I'm just going to run the course. I'm going to see, I'm going to continue growing, keep having fun with this. Um, and that's really the key, having fun with it, having it where no longer it, like I, the money's going to come, or at least the success is going to come. Um, right now I'm at a point where Delhi Fresh Dreads pays for itself. It does its thing. It feeds itself. And gross. Um, and that's kind of, and, and that's what you want with growth. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, and it's hard because I, I do, I sometimes play the game of comparing myself to other brands yeah. where I should be. And it's so difficult to do, but at the end of the day, you lower your head, you run the journey, you have fun, you, in, you create opportunities and you basically create amazing relationships. And to me, like, that's like the one thing that I can safely say that in my 10 years, I'm excited for one, the biggest thing that I'm probably the most, like I get the most emotional about is that I actually had an idea and I did it because yeah. we've, you know, we, we deal with too many of these like hurdles in life where we kind of like, oh, I have this idea. And then you never do it. Um, you know, and it, I mean, perfect example, this podcast, you know, will you, I, I had this idea. I had the idea a year before I even did, did it. Um, I didn't have a name for it, but it was the same concept. And you were the one that kind of said like, dude, what's your hurdle? I'm going to take your hurdle away. Yeah. And that to me is like huge because it's like, there's the, we, we, we talk ourselves out of things and then we just don't do it. So for me, that's been like, I, I think to me, like the biggest success, regardless of whatever happens is the fact that I had an idea and I said, you know what, I'm going to do it. And I just did it. Um, and, and even though it was kind of crazy and people kind of look at you when they're like, look at me sometimes and they're like, you're like, you do a sandwich brand. Like, what the heck is that? Why would you do that? And I'm like, I don't know. I just love sandwiches. I'm like, I want to just, you know, I'm like, and, and you don't have to wear it because there's like, you know, a hundred million other people that are going to actually love sandwiches and, and they'll definitely wear it because it'll bring them back some nostalgia or they'll just be like, Hey, that's my favorite sandwich or Hey man, that's a kick-ass design. Uh, and that's kind of what I want. I want people to wear things that they love. And, and if it happens to be a sandwich shirt, then fantastic. Today of this episode coming out, it's been 10 years, Daily Fresh Threads. Yeah. We hope in the future, the next 10 years, more community, more events, more wholesale, more shirts, and of course, more sandwiches. Heck to the yeah, man. More sandwiches. Biggie, where can they find Daily Fresh Threads? So you can find me at delifreshthreads.com. 
Um, obviously you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, um, you know, pretty much Facebook, all of those. Uh, if you're local, you can, if you're in Orlando, you can get me, shop me at the neighbors. Um, I'm at a few other locations across the country um, and hoping, hopefully hoping to be at more, um, you know, if, if you obviously love sandwiches and you want to have something like that, you know, by all means, tell, tell people around, uh, tell other shops to reach out to me. We, uh, I am on fair and, uh, and I'm on other options so we can do wholesale and, uh, and I doubt let's, let's grow this thing. And all those links will be in the description right yes I'm everything will be in the <laughs> no everything will be in the descriptions yes everything will be in the descriptions for you to be able to to look in the show notes you'll be able to see all that uh and you'll be able to see a bunch of pictures and i'll make sure to include um the honest shirt in my uh in my carousel when i post that yeah. um during the week on my instagram buy that shirt all right well biggie it's been a great lunch thanks for hanging thanks, out and congratulations on 10 years Thank you so much, Will. Thanks for your friendship. Thanks for uh, you know your mentorship and and kind of your help. I I, uh, I really do appreciate it, and that's kind of one of the reasons why I I wanted to do my podcast as well is because I wanted to create that relationship with some other folks that you know maybe be able to help them along the way because um, it's so important to have someone that actually knows um, knows your like know at least understands your business and can kind of give you some insight that maybe someone else wouldn't. Um, so I definitely appreciate it. And thank you so much for, uh, for having me on or at least hosting, uh, hosting my show. Okay. Wave because we're on video. Bye. <laughs> Bye guys. Thank you so much. You, uh, you didn't ask me the nope. question. So can I'm going to record it after I forgot. I'm going to record it after. Okay. And then I'm going to just cut it into the, the beginning. Okay. Okay. I had it written. I just skipped it. Um,